What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our farm vlog channel here at Hidden Heights Farm. I'm out in the shop with Miss Kaya, my daughter, and one of the new baby Cayuga ducks. We're gonna do a little update on the ducks. So how's your ducks doing? Good. They have water. Well, have I'm fixing to show you how to uh, give them fresh water every day. You are? So let me see this one real quick. Yeah, these are good farm tours for you guys to learn. It teaches you guys responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you know how important it is to give all animals fresh water and food, right? Yeah. Okay. So, let's go over here and take a little look. So we got their heat lamp on. That is a 250 watt bulb. Uh, they're still like, a, you know, they're just like a week old. So they're going to have to have a little heat for now. Um, like I said, we're kind of new to raising these ducks. But you can see they got um, their food there. They've still got a lot of food. they still got a lot of water. But we like to keep this little quart size water in there because you can, I don't know if you can see with this red light or not, but that water gets a little dirty because they stick their heads in there and that's kind of how they wash their beaks and their noses out. Mm -hmm. They stick their heads in there and kind of do their little thing and the water gets a little dirty. So it's still drinkable and uh, fine and everything. But what we do every day, at least once a day, maybe sometimes twice a day, we'll make sure that they have a clean bottle of water. So we're gonna do that, but first, I wanna talk to you guys about something that something else we're gonna do. Let me walk outside and show you guys what's going on. So it is springtime here in Oklahoma. That means tornadoes and severe storms. And it is super windy, you can hear it. We are actually under a watch right now and uh, we're supposed to be getting some rain and some severe weather like here pretty quick. I think the rain's supposed to move in within the next 30 minutes to an hour. So I'm out here at the cellar. If you guys have been following us, you know we got a cellar. You don't want to get down there. So I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like right now. And uh, thanks to you guys. Um, I think that door's fine. I don't think it'll blow. Thanks to you guys. Um, last year you guys gave me some ideas and I did go ahead and purchase some things which I don't have them in there yet, but that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, we'll do this real quick and then we'll go with Kai and the ducks and teach her all that stuff. And we'll go check out the new goats on the big pasture, see how they're doing. But first, Kai, let's do the uh, cellar stuff real quick. Okay, I'll... So put your baby up. So uh, one thing that we have that you guys mentioned that I didn't really think about was a... Uh, you know what this is? Mm-mm. Huh? No. It's a toilet? It's a toilet. It's a bucket toilet. So you guys uh, mentioned this last year, and I was like, you know what? That's an awesome idea. So I got on Amazon. These things are super cheap. They just fit right on this bucket. And I actually got some biodegradable liners. So when you stick, it, stick them in there, somebody gets trapped in there. We get trapped in there for a long period of time because it has happened before. Um... Hold on. Um, it has happened before. We've been in there for several hours, and a lot of times you know how kids are, and you know, everybody. Sometimes you just gotta go to the bathroom, and if you're in the middle of a uh, tornado threat or anything like that, you sure don't wanna be getting out. So, we've got that, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that on there. We're not gonna put the liners on there yet, but I do got something else to show you. Let us fit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, hey, that's awesome. That's a uh, portable toilet. Put those liners in there and do your business. And uh, there you go. Will you hand me that bag? Here, hold on. It might be a little heavy. All right. So, I always, uh, Rachel gets on to me. She says I'm a whore. But I always keep stuff like this, like these fold your coffee cans and stuff. Because they got lids, they're great for storing screws and bolts or whatever in. But what I was thinking is, is what if I get one or two of these and store some pine shavings in? And then if we're in there and we gotta go to the bathroom, you can always use this to kind of cover up the scent. Whatever reason, I won't get too much into that. I knew, I know we do have the bags too, so we can always do that. But we can store all this in there. It's not gonna take up any extra space. And then. This whole bucket actually just adds another seat for down there. So I think that's awesome. So thank you to you subscribers that um, 
suggested that last year. That is an awesome idea. What's this? This is called a gamma lid. And what this does, it has a seal on it. And um, I don't know where all you can buy these. I do know you can get them on Amazon. I know I say this all the time, but I will try to put a link down in the description because I think these are the coolest things ever. They're bug proof, waterproof, nothing can get in here once you seal it to this bucket. So uh, I'll put a link down in the description. If I can remember, I always forget. So what you do, I might have to get a mallet. Hold on. Talk to the camera for a second. Okay, so. Where's my rubber mallet go? Mm -hmm. Talk to the camera. Okay. Oh, here it is. Alright, watch this your fingers. This toilet is probably affordable. Affordable? Yeah! Are you being a salesman now? Maybe. Alright. I think it's on there now. Alright guys, what this does is, it seals the lid on. And then it actually, you screw this on, there's another rubber gasket on here. And it keeps the stuff dry. And uh, if you know anything about basements or cellars, if there's anything like ours here in Northeast Oklahoma, we live in a very rocky place, so we have a lot of black widows, we have a lot of scorpions. Well, yeah, we like to keep things in our cellar, like food and survival supplies. A bunch of water. Hand me that stuff. And the last thing you want to do is be digging around and stuff that you need to get at the last minute in the dark or in the middle of a storm and have to dig through spiders and stuff. So. One thing we like to keep in there, we already have some in there, but these are a lot fresher. Them are pretty old. These are MREs. And uh, we're just going to put two in there. And these things are packed with tons and tons of calories. And uh, I know a lot of people say, why don't you have a week's worth of food in that cellar? Or the bunker, whatever you want to call it. Um, main thing is, if there's a tornado here in Oklahoma and we are trapped in that cellar, it can happen. Uh, the tornado could throw a truck on the door. It could throw trees on our door where we can't open it up and we're stuck in there. But Oklahoma has a thing. Our county, Mace County here, actually has a registry. You register your storm cellar with it. And if a storm cellar comes to your area, they actually have an emergency management that goes out and checks to make sure for things like that. Now, what if an F5 comes through and wipes out the whole county? Well, I don't know. Uh, we got a lot of family that lives all throughout Northeast Oklahoma, so hopefully if we're not on Facebook or one of our social medias or don't post a video for a couple days here on YouTube, people will probably get the hint and they'll actually come checking. Uh, that is one thing about Oklahoma is Oklahoma proud. A lot of people look out for their neighbors, look out for everybody, uh, especially family. So that's one thing you can always count on. If a tornado does come through here, it's going to be on the news, it's going to be on national news. People will come looking for us and hopefully rescue us. So we don't need tons and tons of food. Like I said, we do have MREs in there already. But today we're going to get some fresh ones that I just bought. This is chicken chunks, white chicken chunks cooked. And mm. then we got some uh, shredded beef and barbecue sauce. Ooh, that and good. these MREs does have like, it does have the heater pack in there. It has some desserts in there. Toilet paper, sugar, salt, pepper, forks, spoons. Paper? But we got this toilet paper here. You want to put this one? So I'll keep I'll keep the toilet paper in this one because I know this one's dry. I don't know if that toilet one's 100% dry. And then we already have like a whole case of water in there, but I'm gonna put some extra. And what I really want to do is get one of them five gallon uh, bottles of water to keep in there. Yeah. Because we'll probably need those. You just never know. Um, you know, you, you might need the bunker for other things rather than the storms, and uh, you never know. And some of the stuff we already got in there is like candles, we got food, and water. And now we're going to be adding this, we're going to be adding the toilet. So you want to carry this, help me carry this stuff? Mm -hmm. right. I'll carry the toilet. You got the toilet. Alright, let's go. And of course we always keep flashlights in there. You need the door open. I got it. Hmm. So we always keep flashlights in the bunker, but we always, almost always have a lantern, battery powered lanterns. We have multiple sources of lights. So we're always pretty much prepared, but now we actually have a toilet, so that's even better. Let's see if I can get in this thing. 
got it. I don't want you to fall. I got the tripod on here, so it's gonna mess it up. All right. So that little case there has candles, it has MREs, water. It used to have a bunch of coloring books in there for kids, stuff like that. Here, grab my hand. So there you go. Now we just added two extra seats. We got these old milk crates in here. And I absolutely do not see any spiders. It's still pretty cold. But like I said, a lot of times you get these scorpions. I don't see no scorpions either. But there is some dirt daubers, which is not going to hurt us. That's probably from last year. But as you can see, we keep flashlights in here, we keep batteries in here. Try to keep everything in here. These metal chairs are probably not the best to keep in here because they do get wet and rusty and all that. But oh. yeah, you think that toilet's going to work? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so there's our gamma bucket. Lid. Got our supplies in there. We can. We even got room to add some more stuff. Let me see if I can uh, open this easily. Dude, there's a big needle. Yeah. There's always going to be bugs. Yeah. I think I got it too tight. Right. Yeah, that's not too bad. So, see, we still got half a five gallon bucket. We can store all kinds of stuff in. That's pretty awesome. I need to get some more of these lids. Alright, let's go. Uh, Check on your ducks. Okay, Kaya. So every day I want you to come out here after school and this little water bottle right here, the mm -hmm. yellow one, I want you to get it. Come on, get it. And we're going to come out here, go to the water hydrant. I'm going to teach you how to clean it out and fill it back up. Okay? Yeah, it is pretty dirty. We got to keep it clean every day. What are you doing, Butterscotch? Butterscotch. Get out of here. Okay. So what you do is you come out here and you go ahead and take that off. Unscrew it. Yes. Okay. Now, take this one first. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on. Now look, when you turn the water on, it usually blasts really hard and it'll get you all wet. So go ahead and turn it on and then just push this handle down a little bit. Oh, wow. Kind of rinse that out. Get all that out of there. Okay. Nasty stuff in our water. Now you rinse your other bottle out. Put that one down, you're getting your shoes all wet. What's what you're doing. Kind of swirl it around a little bit. Sometimes I'm shaving to get in there. Okay, that's good. Now just dump it out. Okay, just fill it back up. Hey, you don't step on that blue thing. Oh. Okay. Now, that make it full. Fill it all the way up. Okay, now pay attention to what you're doing. Pick up that yellow thing behind you real easy. You can, it usually works better if you set this on the ground, but I'll hold it for you. Now screw this back on. Okay. Oh. You get it, you gotta feel like if you can over tighten it and when you over tighten it, it pops off. Just get it a little tight. There you go. Yeah. And that's perfect. Now when you carry it, I want you to carry it just like that. Because so if you flip water, it over, all the water is going to start yeah. coming out. Okay. It's very important that we give them fresh water every day. Mm -hmm. Very important. Okay, now we do, all right, hold on. So we leave the big one in there all the time and daddy will make sure that one's full, okay? Cause that one's heavy and it's really messy. So what I, what I want you to do is flip that one over real fast right here. No, there you go. And just kind of set it down in there and put it, yeah, put it towards that end. Now listen, whenever you flip that over and you go to put it in there and everything, you have to make sure that you do not loosen that yellow part or all that water will just rush out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see. If... They, they are, uh, I think they're already growing. Yeah. So their food's okay and uh, I'll show you how to do that the next time we need to fill it up. It's kind of hard to do when you're little because it's really messy. So... Next time it needs filled up, I'll show you how we do oh, it. Oh, that one was wiggling its toe. Yeah, they're shaking their butts. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so there you go. 
<laughs> now you know how to water it and take care of your ducks, right? Yep. All right. Good girl. All right, guys. We're going to walk out here and take a look at the Kiko and Spanish goat herd. They're turned out on the big pasture now with all the green clover and all the green weeds coming up. Um, the barn's still open, but you want to watch this video till the end because we're going to have a little mail call. We've been getting uh, several packages of mail and some of them's very interesting and I'm super excited. So uh, here in a little bit, I'll set the family down and uh, we'll have a mail call, show you guys all the stuff we have been getting in. In the last video, we showed you, I think uh, we got... We got the uh, pill pouches sent in, those little greeny brand, and Daisy's been eating them up. So far, so good. Don't want to jinx that, but let's take a walk out here and see if these guys have been munching on the grass yet. Or the weeds, whatever you want to call it. What do you know, girl? What do you know? How you feeling today? You guys feeling a lot better? You got, you got your old hooves trimmed? You're out here with all this clover. You can see they've already been munching it down. Look at that. Munching on the greens. Everybody's starting to uh, kind of fill back up. Like I said, we ran out of hay, so everybody started kind of getting thin, which that don't always mean malnutrition in remnant animals like goats, because the way that works is their stomach is made to hold several days of grass and organic matter, whatever they're eating. And what that does is that ferments and they they kind of spit that back up in their mouth and they chew their cud for a couple days. They don't just eat and it comes right back out of their stomachs. So if they go a week or two without eating hay, they kind of start slimming down because they don't have that big reserve in their uh, rumens. So you can already tell just being out here, I think it's been two days now, they've been out here eating this green grass and you can already tell they're starting to fill back up and looking a lot more healthier. We gave them the copper bolus, which is a major health benefit to goats. And here soon, I'm gonna be working on getting this all cleaned out. We'll get this added to a compost pile. I'll get this hay feeder out of here. This tartar um, kitting panels, we'll get them reset up somewhere. You see baby back there getting some milk. Who is that? One sock, two sock, three socks, no socks. I think that's Dr. Seuss. Is that Dr. Seuss, Daisy? Huh? Is that Dr. Seuss? So anyways, the goats have a nice place to get out of the storm and the rain. They get back in this barn. Daisy gets back in here. They should be fine. I just, I'm, I'm glad to see that there's still clover and we didn't turn them out here and uh, they just ate it all. Now one thing you have to watch when you do that, when you release the goats into a new field, when they haven't had a bunch of lush grass and greens or leaves to eat, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll come out here and gorge and gorge and gorge yourself and they'll actually get bloated. And you'll walk out here and you'll see one laying on their side and their left side, I believe it is, will just be swelled up and full of gas and it's not a good sight it's very painful for them and a lot of times they end up passing away We've got a battle going on right there well, i guess we're done everybody's still got their green green paint behind their heads not all of them but most of them i think there was one or two we didn't mark but some of the kids like these kids here we didn't work those mainly it was just the adults they all got their hooves trimmed and Got their copper bolus. Should make them feel a lot better. So now let's go take a look at the Pico babies. Come up. Momo. Momo joke.
You don't like these storms coming in, do you? You better eat now. It's gonna start fighting. Thunder. He don't like the thunder. There's old Mickey. Everybody keeps asking about Mickey. So you see the kids' new fang favorite hangout. Either they're on top of it or they are dog piling down under below, but just about as many as you can fit get in there. <laughs> oh, what a sight. Look at that. Is that not funny? <laughs> Another week or two, there's no way that they could all fit in there. No way. They grow so fast. You know, little babies. Cute little goats. You know, Mickey. Come here. Mickey here. Mickey here. Got Mickey. See what Mickey thinks of the slide. They sure love that little picnic table too. So that's the one that has the black leg and um, had a few comments where people thought that his leg was hurt, but it's actually not. He he plays just fine. He runs around just like the other goats. He's actually quite bigger and he gets around quite well. And you guys know when you got goats with babies on them, a lot of times they will go through the water. So I added this bigger tank over here. That's a 50 gallon tank because the other one I had over here I was having to come fill it up like twice a day and with this one it'll last three or four days and I still try to give them fresh water every day and it just is kind of like an insurance to where for some reason I wasn't able to get out here and I, they're never going to run out of water and I've been keeping their mineral full they've been going through this about every two days so that's a good sign that should get into the milk and then the babies and we got some uh chickens that are setting and right now we're not getting a ton of eggs because the problem is whenever these girls are setting the other girls come in here and they're like oh there's already a chicken in this box i'm gonna get in there and lay an egg so they just keep laying eggs in here and i don't know how to stop that and there was a chicken laying on those eggs and she's not in there right now she probably heard me come to the gate those eggs are warm though so she was setting on them but we found another place over where we parked the tractors where the chickens have been laying eggs and they've been laying about six or eight eggs over there every day. So I need to get them before I go in. But like I said, stay tuned for this video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up for now. But here after dinner, we'll do a milk haul and uh, hopefully these big storms don't roll in. Hopefully they miss us. So a lot of you guys that watch our videos are probably thinking, why do they still have this tree <laughs> laying down over here in their pasture so this tree has a little bit of a story um, when we first moved up here like 16 years ago I went out in the woods and I dug this tree up and I didn't exactly know what it was I thought it was like a wild cherry tree because it looked just like this except it was just a little sapling and what this is is a little wild plum tree or sand plum i know different parts of the country calls it different things but you can see it's all bloomed out and yesterday we were out here and it was all sunny the bees absolutely love these trees and they smell quite awesome as well and it does kind of look kind of junky right now because all these limbs and stuff i need to come out here and kind of prune it up the only thing is some of these limbs are actually holding the tree up and I don't think I could dig a hole and put it back into the ground. What happened is, uh, two summers ago, big storm coming through. We had tornadoes just right down the road. And it actually blew this tree over and the big oak tree right next to our house. Which provided tons of firewood for us, thankfully. 
But this tree here, I was like, man, I was just going to dig it up and just take it to the burn pile. And I kind of left it laying here like this. And what happened is this limb right here just started growing up. And now it looks like a normal tree again. It's starting to look kind of weird, but I need to trim it up. But the goats and the chickens absolutely love playing on this tree. I know it's kind of a eyesore in a way, but in another way, it's kind of cool looking to me. And it's the first tree I ever planted on this property. So it's just kind of a... I don't know if it's sentimental value or whatever, but we just chose to kind of leave it like that. I don't know. Might get a wild hair one day, come out here and dig it up. But for now, we're going to leave it. Um, it's actually feeding the bees, and it's kind of pretty in a way if you don't look at the very bottom. But yeah, stay tuned here in a little bit after dinner. If we can beat these storms, hopefully the storms roll through and don't affect us. But we'll do a little mail call and open some of these boxes up. Okay, guys, we're all in here now. We got the packages and the boxes. We want to do a little bit of a mail call. Uh, we got some really cool stuff, I think. So I'm going to let the kids open some packages. Which one you want them to open first? Uh, they want to do... They, I think they peaked in this one already. Yeah. So this one... They say, hope this, hold on, this one was actually delivered to the Walker, Walker Farm fam and they actually yes. was like the uh, middleman in between. Yes, they, they got it to us. They were kind enough to drop it off to me today. So thank you, Walker Farm fam. You got a note in it? It says, hope you all have a great Easter. <laughs> and this is from Jackie Kimmerer. So we appreciate that. Another awesome subscriber. Yes, thank you so much. You guys have no well, idea. What all's in there? That's what everybody wants to know. Well, I kind of peeked a little bit. Oh! So we got jelly beans, jelly beans and it says oh, these man. are called. Let's see, bunny corn. Bunny corn. <laughs> bunny corn. <laughs> it's like candy Hold corns, on. but bunny corn. Oh, that's awesome. Oh! Hey, wait. Let me see that. Flip it around. I've I seen the walkers show this on their More. channel a few times. Yeah. Michael Moots Candies straight from Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I've been seeing the walkers Where get these packages from the same uh -oh. subscriber and everything they've got looks super do do? delicious. It's okay. I accidentally dropped right. a couple. So yeah. Um, oh my gosh, those smell good. Jelly beans? Yes. Yay. Wow, they look wonderful. Okay. And then there's more. Yes. <laughs> wow. Michael Moots candies. And this is actually wrapped. Kaya, unwrap right, that. Kaya. Unwrap these, Kaya. You guys unwrap those. Oh, it's like All Christmas. Right. It's like Christmas. Don't tear it up. Chocolate covered Swedish. Well, oh, it's in wrapping. That's okay. okay. It's, it's like candy? wrapping paper. What is this? Okay, let's see. What is this? It smells like chocolate. Hold on, let's see. Chocolate. Covered Swedish fish. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'll help you open them so you don't tear up the box, okay? Well, I say right, that. Mom help. I say that and I might end up tearing it up. Okay, so this is chocolate covered Swedish. That I looks have good. never tried that. Okay, try one of these. Try one of these, Kaya. What chocolate you think, covered Taylor? Swedish fish. It's gummies covered in chocolate. <laughs> hold on. Hold it still. Huh, interesting. Probably. I like Swedish fish. Mm, probably. Like, those are delicious. Mm -hmm. I would never would have thought. Those are All delicious. Alright, Kaya. Don't want to see yours. Okay, so those are awesome. They're mine. Okay. I like candy. Oh, okay. They don't eat too much. This is one of my favorites. That's enough. Chocolate covered pretzels. Mm -hmm. Love chocolate and, and I believe all these are like handmade up there at this store. Oh, those are huge. Oh Look at these. Have wow. Them. And they're like hearts. Look at that. Awesome. Those, mm. those are my favorite. Mm. Here's okay, sure. one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on. Okay. Okay, you eat that one. I'm going to open the next one, okay? One more left. Oh, wait. There's more stuff in here. There's more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. What is that? Corn dogs. I don't know what those are. I, I think know. I know. It's chocolate bunnies, I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay, easy. Let mom do it because you're going to turn them up. I think she can do that one. Well, it's tape. Yep. I knew it. Wait, what? No. 
just in time for Easter. Chocolate covered uh carrots. Okay. Lamb don't, pop. Don't open them yet. Lamb pop. That's enough candy. <laughs> what are they? I think it says lamb pop. Yeah, but they're oh. sheep dash carrots. It's a sheep. Oh, okay. hey, that's awesome. A carrot pop. No, one. The, Caleb has the ones that are sheep. Okay, lamb pop, and those are carrot pop. <laughs> that's awesome. I got. Okay, well, tell, hey, tell tell her thank you. Oh, thank you very much. This I is, love this stuff. This oh, is yeah. chocolate covered Oreos. No wait, way. Wait, Dad. Mom, that's your favorite Oreos. Yeah. They. All this is my new favorite. Oh. Okay, you guys okay. are going to be up. Okay, I'll eat the rest of it. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh my god, thank you guys so thank much. You so much. Mm -hmm. I'll try this stuff. We Chocolate covered Oreo. It's amazing. That is awesome. And here's the... What's that? There's the card for the Michael Moots. Um, okay. chocolate. Well, we still got more, so tell her thank you very thank much. You thank so you so much. Okay. Guys, Thanks. tell her thank you. Thank, thank you. you. They're busy digging in. Thank you okay. so much. All right. All right, let's move this aside because we haven't had dinner yet and y'all don't need too much sugar mm -hmm. just yet. So if you don't, if you can't tell, we don't normally do these milk calls like this. And uh, I know it's taking a little bit, so those of you that are still watching, thank you. It's a little bit new to us, so we just wanted to give thanks back to the people sending us this stuff. And it's super exciting for us, and especially the kids, and all that is very delicious. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. All right, we got Okay, it. hold on, hold on, hold on. Sit down, sis. Well. Some of those. Okay, don't. this says, gift for the dogs. Love watching you from North Carolina from Lena Woods. What we got? Thank you, Lena. Um, uh, the dog's favorite treat in the oh whole world. Oh my gosh. That is a big oh. bag of pepperoni. Skeeter! 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 Oh, he was, he was under the table just wait. He's already licking his lips. Uh -oh. I don't know if I'm going to try it. We got another see. bag. We need to get this done. Okay. So, here's the next. Did this one have a note? Some of them do and some of them don't. Sometimes. I don't see a note. So there's another bag. We got two bags. The pepperonis. It doesn't say on the label, probably, does it? Um, let me look. What was the name of the other one? Lena Woods. Okay. Thank you, Lena. Yes, thank you so much. It does not okay. say. Okay. Well. It doesn't say on this one, then there's no note. So, Lena, thank you for sending the one bag of pepperoni, and whoever sent the second bag, thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, I've been waiting to open this one for last, last but not least for sure. This is from Grow Jack Outdoors, my little buddy down in southern Oklahoma, another Oklahoma YouTube channel, but this YouTube channel is kind of unique because it's actually a kid. Okay, so get that jelly bean from Skeeter real All right, quick. you want to read that? Okay, I'm going to give Skeeter his treat real quick. Skeeter! Okay. Mer Skeet! Come on! Mer Skeet! Watch out! Come here, Skeet! Sit down! Hey! Come here! Okay, so here. <laughs> they want to see Skeeter eating his treat! Well, Mojo and Daisy's got to get theirs. Too. Yes, they will. Oh! I split it in half for him. Okay, you got half. Of it. Okay, so. so. So this is a package from Grow Jack Outdoors. Yes, and it says, "I'll read that yeah, at the end." Still in that chair. I'll read this at the end. Okay. So he sent us a Grow Jack Outdoors sticker. Hold on. That is an awesome sticker. Okay, and something very, very special that we're super excited about, and the kids will want to grow these. Yeah. What is so it? So he sent... Giant pumpkin seeds! Yes, hold on. Hold on. Yes. It's upside down. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Hold on. Let me get it focused. So that's Jack with, I'm going to say a 258 pound pumpkin. So Jack actually grows these pumpkins. Oh, they got another little... Okay. Little there. So it says, oh, Jack. good luck with these seeds from Jack. He wrote us a note, <laughs> which is super sweet. Awesome. And then he even sent us um, a brochure 
of how to actually grow sorry a how pumpkin. to actually grow these pumpkin hey, seeds. that is an awesome idea i mean it's very I... detailed look at that it's got his picture on it <laughs> and this young man not only gardens but he traps he does all kinds of videos. He is in 4-H. He showed pigs this year. He always has an awesome adventure yes. going on on his little, I don't know what, what you call it, but I know when I first caught my eye, um, I didn't even know about him. And then one day I was, you know, searching YouTube like everybody else. And I see a thumbnail of these giant pumpkins. And I'm like, what in the world? So I click on it and watch and come to find out he's in Oklahoma too. Uh, he actually lives that you know not too far from a uh, Arms Family Homestead. I think he lives down around that area somewhere. But how awesome is it to have a kid that's just the same? He's around the same age as Caleb, in between Caleb and Kaya, I believe. And he grows these pumpkins and watermelons that I have never even seen before. Prize winning. Prize winning ones. And he actually he vlogs all this and he takes them to these shows and these competitions and competes and you know he makes a lot of videos overall but so if you guys don't know grow jack outdoors go to their channel i'll try to put an icard up right here if i can remember i'll put a link down in the description it's another oklahoma channel but it's not an adult it's a kid and this is he is very creative like i said he don't just grow vegetables and pumpkins and watermelons he's doing trapping they're always doing something outdoors showing pigs all kinds of awesome stuff and we support him 100 yes. percent. so jack thank you so much thank you so much jack whenever this frost danger clears from this northeast oklahoma area we will definitely get those seeds in the ground and we're going to read your brochure we'll read your brochure but uh <laughs> we'll be watching your channel yes. to try to get some uh secret tips because i want to try to grow one of these giant pumpkins i think it would be awesome we're gonna let the kids play. How would you like to grow a pumpkin that big? Can you like imagine? 250 that? pound pumpkin. Look how big that is. That's probably big. That'd be an awesome, uh, like two people that'd be a big uh, jack o' lantern to carve My for gosh. Halloween. Someone so, carved one in an elephant. That's, in a seen that. That's awesome. So, guys, we're gonna wrap this video up. We're going way too over. Yeah, but so, I need to say something. Okay, make it quick. Okay, so I learned about how to grow a giant uh, pumpkin. And they actually made boats and they raced. Yes, I've seen Are that. Are you serious? I've never seen that. They all right, so hey, huh. what do you want to tell all these people that send us this awesome stuff? Thank, thank you, you very, very, very much. much. Yes, thank very you so much. much. We appreciate all you guys. You're very, very sweet. I'm going to enjoy all this candy. <laughs> not all at once, you know. <laughs> so, in our native Cherokee language, saying thank you is wado so wado to all you guys we're gonna wrap this video up thank you for the ones that stuck around to this extra long video and uh, if you're not subscribed subscribe to the channel because you want to stay tuned and see if we can grow these giant pumpkins from the seeds that jack sent us leave a comment like this video and we'll see you next time see ya bye